Pinterest, yes. what do you have? So I have in the summer roll is going to be cabbage, carrot, cucumber, and avocado. And then we have green beans, broccoli, red bell pepper. I don't know. If in the lo mein. Is there any chicken? There's, There's pork. pork. Which I have lots of pork facts. Okay. Which we learned is a great source of B vitamins. Yeah, B6. Here you go. Here are all your little cheap. <laughs> An intern made these. I found them yesterday when I was oh. when I was cleaning up. So we are live. I don't think if it matters if people hear us, but oh. oh, oops. I don't think anyone's going to hear us. No, I, I don't.
your way in there. You can leave an ingredients to them. Alright, do we have a list? Yeah. Alright, I'm going to <laughs> so, welcome to Kitchen Corner with Clara and that's Caitlin. Eating peanut butter. <laughs> peanut butter. Didn't know we were live. We're live. Um, today we are in our office again. We are making homemade Chinese food, mm -hmm. which I'm very excited about because mm -hmm. this is one of my favorite go to's when I want either something really, really quick or something really, really delicious. So, I over here am going to be making a pork lo mein. What are you and I'm going to be making some summer rolls, mm -hmm. which are a nice kind of fresh alternative to spring or egg rolls, which are traditionally deep fried. Yeah. So summer rolls are going to be full of nice fresh vegetables, and it's going to be like our salad component, our veggie uh, component. component. Yeah. yeah, and I'm making with my lo mein, because we're making it at home, you can add really any kind of vegetable that you want to it, which is why I love making Chinese food and other restaurant favorites at home, because you can control what ingredients you're adding and you can add more veggies and it's a great way to get the kids or get maybe other people who haven't tried certain vegetables to try when you put them in with some other really tasty ingredients. Definitely. Definitely. Alright, so you want to get started? Yeah. So okay. you explain what you're doing and then I'll... I am over here chopping lots of veggies. We're going to be putting cabbage and cucumber, um, some avocado and carrot into our summer rolls. and let makes it into a roll is what we have these wrappers. They're rice wrappers. They come in there kind of crispy and kind of an interesting texture, but you put them in water so that they soften and then you can make them more pliable and you can make it into a roll. So I'm really excited to see you do this because mm -hmm. I've never made a summer roll before. It's so. been a while since I've done it. All right. So. Well, we have no fear. <laughs> That's what being a rebel is all about is mm -hmm. no fear and you just get down and dirty and you do it. So that's what we're doing today. Um, you also may notice that we have a new kitchen cart, which we are very excited yes, about. Yes, I'm so excited. Because we like to cook in our office and we have a little space to do it. Yeah, just a little bit. But, okay, if we can do it in our office in about 52 inches worth of space, you can do it at home. That's how easy these recipes are. It's true. So, so I'm just over here. I already chopped some peppers. I am chopping some broccoli. I am making pork lo mein today, Yum. although you could really do any kind of protein that you want, chicken, beef, shrimp. Um, but I wanted to talk about pork today because pork, I feel like, is a misunderstood protein. It is. It is so misunderstood. And I have clients look at me all the time, they're like, Clara, I can't eat pork because it's so fatty. And it is not. Yes, certain cuts of pork are fattier, but that can be said about almost any kind of protein. You're going to have a fattier source in that protein. Um, but pork, you know, a pork chop, you're going to have, I just looked up the numbers. So a three ounces of a boneless, skinless chicken breast has about 3.1 grams of fat in it. And a pork chop, three ounces, has 3.0 grams of fat in it. So it's less. Leaner than chicken. Leaner than That's chicken. That's amazing. Also, fun fact, pork is a great source of all of the B vitamins except for folate. So That's awesome. Yeah. So you should definitely add some pork in your diet. You definitely you should. Definitely, definitely should. So I'm just chopping away, doing all kinds of stuff. Caitlin, what vegetables are you chopping so now? So I'm working on the cucumber, which... You can see a lot of times cucumbers have a lot of those seeds in the center, so I just kind of cut them into wedges and then slice down the center to get all those seeds out. 
And the reason she's doing that is because you don't want your roll to be super watery. If you're eating cucumbers just with like hummus or ranch or something like that, totally fine, keep it. It's a great way to actually stay hydrated. I know during the summer months, now it's a little cooler, but during the summer they have a high water content. So I just don't really like the seeds though. I usually oh. take them out. Oh, that's fine. I don't mind the seeds, <laughs> so I leave mine in. Um, but you can keep them in if you like them. Or if you like Caitlin and you don't Do what like you them. want. <laughs> Do you. Take them out. Now, what I love about these summer rolls is that we're doing all kinds of colors because it's pretty corny, but I love to say, eat a rainbow. Eat a Every rainbow. different color of vegetable and fruit has different nutrients. Yeah. So you want to get a wide variety, lots of colors, get all those different nutrients. Go in. Yeah. Well, and, you know, certain things like peppers are a great source of vitamin C. People don't think about it because you think vitamin C, you think oranges, but peppers are a great source of vitamin mm -hmm. C. And your broccoli is a great source of vitamin K. Definitely. All right, I'm gonna chop some green beans too. Cool. I'm just boiling off my water. It's almost there. I'm using today just plain old linguine because it was on sale easy. at the grocery store and it's affordable and it's easy. You can certainly get specialty um, udon noodles or any kind of thing like that, but if you're on a budget, these are fantastic. So why is it good to make our Chinese food style dinner at home? Well, one, like we said earlier, you can add more veggies. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes I get disappointed, and I don't know if this is a dietitian thing, but I don't get as many veggies as I want when I order them. From the except the beef and broccoli. There's always except lots the beef of broccoli. And broccoli. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know, some of the other ones, you kind of you can't really control how many vegetables you get. So when you make it at home, you can add as many veggies as you want, and you can add your favorite veggies. I know that some people. You know, certain veggies are more palatable than other veggies, so you can control which ones you're adding. That's number one. Number two is you can really control the ingredients. You can control how much salt you're adding. I think Asian cuisine is known for being higher in sodium, and if you're watching your sodium, whether it's for health reasons or for whatever reason it is, you know, you can you can control how much you're adding. And it's fun to do with the kids and with the family and just get people chopping for you and <laughs> put other people to work. Basically. <laughs> you know, get people involved. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And if you do do takeout, I think the easiest way to control the sodium is to get the sauce on the side. Uh -huh. Because really that sauce is where you're gonna see a lot of the sodium. And something that I do and I'll tell my clients to do is either order an extra side of steamed veggies or keep frozen veggies in the freezer. You know, stick them in the microwave. It's an easy way to get extra veggies if you need it. You know. And fresh is just as nutritious. Fresh is it? No, frozen, frozen is just as nutritious. That's what she meant. That's what I meant. I can read your mind. You're good. <laughs> um, so that's, that's basically that. And also, you know, you can like mix things up like if you want to make a stir fry you know I think the great thing about cooking it at home is you don't have to use the same veggies if you go into your fridge at the end of the week and you have some broccoli sitting there and something else you're like all right well this is what's going in the stir fry tonight and it makes you know it just makes sense it's delicious mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's so many different sauces out there too so what's going into your sauce today um so I put so I made mine with a little bit of soy sauce so soy sauce Oyster sauce, which I thought was a common ingredient, but after talking to people, you guys Never didn't know what oyster sauce was. So it's a common ingredient found in Asian cuisine. So soy sauce, oyster sauce, we put a little bit of brown sugar for the sweetness, and we put some garlic powder and ginger powder in there as well. Nice. I will also be doing a dipping sauce, because that's yes. probably my favorite part of summer rolls. What, part, what are you putting in your dipping sauce? Oh, peanut butter. Peanut butter, of course. <laughs> Actually, for my uh, meal prep this week, I made a salad with a peanut dressing it's so yummy it looked really morning. good yum it looked so good I was so a I'm, a, I'm a fan of the peanut sauces so peanut butter soy sauce a little bit of lime juice some oil sriracha because Caitlin likes oh, it spicy, spicy. <laughs> as we learned last week <laughs> so yeah I'm pretty excited about it very exciting all right I'm just cutting some green onions too and another reason why it's fun to cook at home, especially those type of things, is if you're on a specific diet, like a low FODMAP diet or a gluten-free diet, you know, you can still enjoy these foods with just making some really simple um, changes out. You know, you don't have to feel like you can never have, you know, Chinese food ever again just because you're on a low FODMAP diet. Well, a couple of weeks, 
months ago, months we made ago. a low FODMAP uh, meal right here for we did. our intern Danica. Yeah, because one of our interns was following the low FODMAP diet at the time. So I was like, all right, well, we're going to do this. And I made a really delicious peanut pasta thing and then lettuce wraps. And they were pretty good. It was delicious. Thank you. Like, those lettuce wraps definitely rival the PF Chang. Yeah. And they were low FODMAP friendly, so I'm just saying. They were pretty good. Saying. All right. I think I'm done with the cucumbers. Are you fine? <laughs> I think I'm Perfect. Alright, so we're gonna season up the water. So it's important when you're seasoning when you're doing water is to just season it with a little bit of salt because that helps season your pasta. So I am going to So last week we cooked with a little bit of avocado, but I'm just gonna talk about it again because yes. I love avocado. I love avocado. Um great source of heart healthy fats. Mm -hmm. It's a really great idea to incorporate into your diet. Um, it can be a little difficult though because it has this hard little, uh, someone called it a nut lesson. <laughs> it's a seed. A pit. Or a um, so I use my knife to get it out. Just give it a nice little whack. Watch your other hand. Oh no, I broke it. Did you break it? Do you need my knife? I'm not that good at this. I know, I, I rocked it last week. Mm -hmm. I know. Caitlin doesn't have my skills. I got it. You got it. I got it. I'm proud of you. Okay. Alright, and then I just use a uh, spoon to scoop out the center and we'll slice it up. I got my spoon. Okay. Alright, I put my pasta in and I realize I don't have a stirring material so we're going to be rebellious and I'm going to use my jar. <laughs> so, let's do that. Alright. Scooping out the avocado. Okay, just let that go. Hmm. All right. Chopped up my green onion. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna I'm excited about this. I am too. It sounds mm -hmm. delicious. Mm -hmm. I am. I've, I've never made lo mein before. Never? Never. I made it a couple weeks ago and I always say this because my little brother, he loves to eat. But he gets a little picky when it comes to vegetables sometimes. So right before he left for college, I was actually cooking for our blog. I made beef lo mein because that's one of his favorites and I added all of these vegetables in there. I added the peppers and I added carrots and all that kind of fun stuff. And let me tell you, there wasn't a vegetable left. Like he is no notorious for like picking out the vegetables, he ate everything. So this is a great way to get people to eat vegetables. Peters, great for picking pears. I'm going to leave you for a moment. I'm going to go microwave my peanut butter just to give it a little softer. Okay. Can you, can you hold down the fort without me? I think so. I don't know. I'll, I'll hold down the fort. So, um, Caitlin's doing that. So you can see she's chopped everything up. And again, this is a great way to get people involved in the kitchen. This is another way to, if you have people over, don't feel like you have to be stressed about what you're cooking, how you're cooking it. Bring those people in, you know, make it a sociable event, get people chopping, um, get kids chopping if they're old enough, you know, don't just go handing them a knife, but get them involved in the cooking. I talked a little bit about this last week is, you know, kids enjoy when, from what I've noticed, when you make something and you get to eat it, they're more likely to eat it. So involving them in making this type of recipe that is super colorful or anything like that, they are going to be more likely to want to eat it. So I'm going to chop up this pepper for Caitlin because I'm just waiting for my pasta to boil right now. So getting a little bit more color. I'm putting peppers in it too. You are. I'm chopping it oh, for you. Oh, perfect. That's okay. Teamwork. Mm -hmm. <laughs> teamwork. Teamwork makes All right, teamwork. So I got my peanut butter nice and soft. Mm, soft. Soft. Melted. melted. <laughs> I'm gonna add some soy sauce. I'm not gonna lie. I don't have a recipe for this. I just kind of make it to taste. All right. We'll so, make it to taste. Full disclosure. We'll give you a recipe <laughs> because we know that some yes. people like that. Alright, adding some soy sauce, some lime juice, a little bit of canola oil. It'll be yummy. And actually, I have gotten this question before. So when I make my lo mein, I'm going to use um, canola or vegetable oil. Um, reason being is that it has a higher smoke point, which basically means you can cook at a higher heat. Um, and without it you know, getting just gross for lack of a better word. It just tastes better. You can get to a higher heat. One of the kind of hallmarks of Asian cooking is 
getting to a higher heat. Um, that's like what stir I think. fries. Like stir fries. High temperature. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be using vegetable oil. Um, you could also use canola oil if you wanted it. Okay. Do you want more peppers than that, or does that look good? I have a whole other pepper. I can keep chopping oh, for you. I, well, I have a, so many veggies. I think I'll be making a million. You might be. <laughs> a million <laughs> rolls. Okay, we're going to be making rolls for the rest of the day. <laughs> Come over to our office, 7219, Hanover Parkway, Greenbelt, Maryland. There's a lid in here. <laughs> There's one. Try not. There's a lid. <laughs> And I would just like to point out mm -hmm. is that cooking doesn't have to be perfect. As you can tell, Caitlin and I are having fun with this. We're just joking around. Sometimes things don't go the way they're supposed to, but you just, you know, have a blast. <laughs> More lids. More lids. Do you need me to chop it for you or something? Hmm. I don't know. This is when we need an engineer. Yeah, I got you it. figure that out. I'll figure it out. You do the rest of them because I'm sriracha. Ooh. We're good. It's just going. It's going slow. <laughs> Apparently, I should have checked every single thing and opened oh, up the seals. <laughs> Again, doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, here, I got this for you. Thank you. You're welcome. I just put a little hole in it. It's nice. You're so smart. I try. That's why we work well together. <laughs> That's why we work well together. <laughs> okay, I should just throw it gently. Can I use this? Yes, you can. That's why they exist. That's why they exist. Okay. What's your next step? My next step is waiting for my pasta to boil, which I'm going to check on right now. And then I'm going to start stir frying. So while that's going, I'm probably just going to get started on the stir fry. Start heating my pan. Sounds like a good idea. At least a little bit. Well, we'll see if both of these fit. I don't know if they will. started and the key to cooking anything is let the pan get hot I am known for being impatient sometimes you are yeah sometimes shocker right I know um, but you have to let it get hot or else it's not gonna taste good. why <laughs> why because then for something like stir-fry and any time when you're like sauteing meat basically if it is hotter, you'll get a good sear, you'll get a good color. If it's not as hot, basically you'll start to boil things and you don't want to boil your meat and start to steam it. Like does it help keep your meat more moist when you get a nice sear on it? It does. It does indeed. So that's why it's important. It tastes better too. How's your sauce? It's good. Good. Peanutty. Peanutty. Okay. This is still going. And we're open to suggestions. If there are people out there who want to see something cooked, let us know. Definitely. We are open to creating your favorite recipes, answering any questions, um, doing any kind of that. So when do you start mm -hmm. soaking these things? It really only takes a few seconds. Oh, really? Okay. okay. It's kind of like one at a time kind of thing. All right. Are you yeah. ready to get started with that? Are you missing something? I think so. All right. I'm ready to try that. Tell me what. Yeah. Do you want to add anything? Sure. It's nice to cook with someone because you can bounce ideas off of them. Okay. Say, what does this need more of? Nothing. I think that tastes good. Very good. Yum. Yum. Perfect. Okay. Cool. All right. I got my little wrapper here. And you only need to soak it for about 15 to 20 seconds. And this water. method to cutting your veggies in this? I kind of thought more of like long. Okay. Because like you can see my uh, cucumbers. cucumbers are long and skinny so that I can wrap them up really easily. So it's your cabbage. So it's just left over. <laughs> <laughs> that avocado looks good. That's you know what good. I heard on the news? Oh, avocado yeah. prices are going down. I think the I shortage is, I think the shortage is <laughs> Is done. it over? It was very hard for us avocado lovers out there. Oh. 
All right, so that looks nice and pliable. But how much avocado should you have in a day? In a serving. In a serving, it is a quarter of an avocado. I know, it is so sad, but it is true. It's a great source of heart healthy fats. No cholesterol, which we talked about last we time did, too. Plants don't have cholesterol. Plants don't have cholesterol. Okay. So I'm just gonna start kind of layering up my veggies. I really like this purple cabbage. Me too. Mostly for the color. Mostly but. for the color, but it's a great source of fiber, great source of different vitamins and minerals. So it's good all around. It is good all around. You can eat it in a salad, you can eat it in a it's cheap. <laughs> Make a stew. You really can do a lot of things with cabbage. My mom will put it with pasta. I know that sounds weird, but interesting. Yeah. It's like a Croatian thing, I think. Alright, we're gonna try this and see how our pasta's going. This looks done to me. It's also gonna cook a little bit more in the mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty good. So we're gonna take this off. Here. So what fun blogs we have coming up soon, Clara? Well, we actually, take, keep an eye out for. This will be a great time to talk about a fun project we have coming up called the Rebel Cleanse. And everyone, I think, well, it was so funny because I told my friends about that we were doing this, and they were like, Clara. You're doing a cleanse because they know, you know, how I feel about cleanses. Mm -hmm. But I told them, like, it's not your traditional cleanse. It is a lifestyle cleanse. It's about, um, you know, going into the new year. So we're starting it January 1, um, going into the new year with the new mentality. You know, how many times have you been on the diet train? Have you gotten on the diet train? You started the gym membership. You started cutting out your favorite foods. Mm -hmm. And then you get to March and you're exhausted and you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. So our Rebel Cleanse is a great way to rethink all of that, you know, really start from scratch. You know, we go through things like expiration dates and cleaning out your cupboards. Uh, that was actually inspired by our boss, Rebecca, who we were talking about spices with and how long you should keep your spices and all of that kind of stuff. So really getting back self -care. to base and self-care are really important, movement, um, all these things that play a role that you know, it's not just the foods you eat. It's really a whole lifestyle and everything that's going around mm -hmm. in it. So Definitely. our goal is to teach people that, you know, you can enjoy the foods that you love. You can eat carbs. You can eat pasta. You don't have to feel like you have to restrict yourself. So mm -hmm. stay tuned. More information's coming about it. We're going to be giving away 30 days of prizes. So many prizes. So many prizes. We're going to be doing lots of fun social media stuff. So stay engaged. Stay ready. So I'm going to start stir frying while we do that. Right. Adding a little bit of oil. Is your first one done? My first one is done. I actually was going to ask you to hand me a plate over there so oh, I can start I can putting on, that, yeah. on there. So here's my little roll. There you go. Yeah. All right. So my and it's staying together. It's staying. So look at you. <laughs> See what happens when you have a little steak in the kitchen. <laughs> so I just added all my vegetables. We're going to get going. Um, while that's going, I am going to chop up my pork. So this is, again, we talked last time about cross-contamination. So I am going to, I chopped up all my vegetables first. Actually, that's a lie. Let me chop these green onions mm -hmm. up for the top first. But, um, so we've talked a lot about fiber so far. We have. All these veggies are great sources of fiber. Why do we need fiber? Well, to not be PC about it, fiber helps you poop. Does help you poop. First. <laughs> first thing. Um, the second thing is it is great for cholesterol and it will help decrease your cholesterol if your cholesterol is high. Mm -hmm. um, I think we talked a little bit last week about you know the misconception with cholesterol foods. We might have things like eggs mm -hmm. um, and oh, I, think we I think we did. So basically you know in the past there's been this whole thing about eggs and cholesterol and can I eat it, can I not eat it. And Based on the new dietary guidelines, which came out last year in 2015, you know, you can, dietary cholesterol does not increase blood cholesterol levels. So that means you can have your eggs, eggs. and things like that, which they're a great source of breakfast protein. Yeah. Now, is there such thing as too many eggs? I mean, so I recommend usually for breakfast about two. 
They're a great source. I mean, just like everything, I think there can be too much of anything in your diet. Mm -hmm. So too much of a good thing is also not good. So, all right. So I cleaned up. I did all my vegetables, so I can do my pork now. I'm just going to put this. But I'm going to have to leave you to go wash my hands in a minute, Caitlin. Okay. Because we're not going to cross-contaminate. No, we don't want that. Mm -mm. Right. No trichinosis here. No trichinosis. I was trying to remember what the name of that <laughs> disease was. Okay, I'll be back. I'm cutting in front of you. Okay. So I'm still over here layering my veggies and trying to make it as pretty as possible because I'm kind of a perfectionist. All right. So while Clara is out, and she had talked about our cleanse, um, we are, we consider ourselves the rebel dietitian. So we're doing a cleanse, but we are rebelling and doing it our own oh, way. Sorry, again. So we do consider ourselves the rebel dietitian. We so are. we are against traditional dieting. We even wrote a book called Taste Sweet Rebellion about mm -hmm. the non-dieting approach to weight loss. Because yep. you really want to do things differently, sustainably. Um, to make them work long term. To make it, yeah. You know. Totally. So by being a rebel dietitian, you know, we reject that diet mentality. We don't believe in cutting out food groups. You know, we believe that you can have your chocolate, you can have your fun foods, whatever that might be, and you can still reach your health goals. Definitely. You know, I think that sometimes there's so much, well not sometimes, a lot of the time there's a lot of emphasis on a number. There's a lot of emphasis on, I need to lose 20 or however many pounds by this certain mm -hmm. date. And it's just, you know, it gets stressful and then, you make these changes and you don't feel like you're getting anywhere, but really you are getting anywhere. You're taking the step to, you know, better health. Right, and like you said earlier today, you know, your health is about more than just a number. It is. And it's, about, it's about eating breakfast, like we said. <laughs> it's the important, most important meal of the day, and, you know, being able to enjoy going to happy hour with your coworkers or your friends and birthday cake on your birthday and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So. That is what we believe in. So I am just going away at my veggies stir fry. It's just stir frying over here. Just letting it go. Now what is this container you're stir frying in? Oh, I am stir frying in my one of my favorite pieces of kitchen equipment. I feel like I say that every week, but this is my wok. And you can get them fairly inexpensively. I think I got mine at Ikea. Nice. Um, no promotion for Ikea, but we're going next week and I'm excited. We are. <laughs> <laughs> I love Ikea. Um, but we, I got mine there and it's great. I mean, and it's great for stir fries. The way that it is shaped helps keep the heat kind of insulated again more with the high heat cooking. Um, and you, but you can really use it for anything. I use it for not stir fries. I use it to just, you know, cook stuff in all mm -hmm. the time. So. Mm -hmm. I'm cutting my pork still. We um, have a lot of stir fry videos. I would say like three or four of them for our Mayhem to Meal Time mm -hmm. program. We love them. We love stir fry. I think my favorite one is, and it surprised me that it is my favorite, was the tofu stir fry. See, that one I was really surprised about. I have never had tofu before that, and they're making it. I was sitting there and I'm like, all right, uh -huh. we're having tofu. Like, okay, I'm going to try and keep an open mind. And it was very good. It was very easy to make also, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about tofu, again, it's a great source of protein. Um, it's a great animal, or gosh, sorry, plant source of protein. Mm -hmm. And it takes the flavor of anything that you want it to. So if you want it to taste like soy sauce, it takes the flavor of soy sauce. Mm -hmm. If you want it sriracha. To, to taste like sriracha, if you're Caitlin, <laughs> it tastes like sriracha. So really it can it can taste like anything you want it to taste and i think i've never used tofu like it can seem weird to pull out this brick of wet white stuff but you don't want to do it <laughs> <laughs> so on our man of meal time video we show how you get rid of all that liquid how you prepare it so that you can use it as a stir fry mm -hmm. and it tastes delicious and you can you know there's so many different types of tofu out there um I've made grilled tofu before. That's the thing I've made it before. I've never eaten it, or before we had had it. Mm -hmm. um, I made grilled tofu for my dad, and it is just amazing because you can get that firm one, but then you can get silken tofu, which is softer. Put it in a smoothie if you want to to get additional protein in the morning. I made um, a chocolate mousse with it before. Really? How was yeah. that? It was actually pretty good. It added a nice like texture. You know, it comes. It's again. It tastes like anything you want it to taste like. So. 
It's really, you have a really good recipe for coconut crusted tofu on our blog. I was really proud of that. Yeah, it was pretty tasty. Really, really good. So, I eat anything covered in coconut, but. <laughs> you know, and we like to experiment in the kitchen because we're nerds and. Because we're nerds. Because we're nerds, but, you know. Don't don't feel don't feel afraid to do it. Or you can follow one of our cooking experiments because that's why we're here. We'll do the work. We'll do the work for you. We'll you know figure out what works and what doesn't. And then you have great, delicious, dietitian approved recipes on our website. Mm -hmm. It's really quite delicious. I'm still going away. I'm cutting my pork. How are you doing with your thing? I'm just plugging away. Plugging away. Okay. So this is looking really really good. Getting some nice color in there. So as soon as I'm done with this, which should be a few more minutes. So we also have a Thanksgiving vlog coming up. We do. We have a great, um, all of us have been in our kitchen cooking for Thanksgiving. Some trying new recipes, some trying old mm -hmm. recipes. I roasted a turkey breast for the first time this year, which was very fun and exciting. It looked delicious. Shout out to my roommate who ate turkey for a very long time after that vlog. <laughs> because we had so much of it. But, um, you know, we have turkey recipe in there. Caitlin made a great cranberry gimlet, which looked awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always making the cocktails. <laughs> you are always making the cocktails. That's also what it means to be a rebel dietitian. Is we mm -hmm. don't, we're not afraid mm -hmm. of alcohol in moderation. Um, we were giving out uh, beer openers, we were all bottle openers mm -hmm. and koozies at Fancy this year. Fancy this year. So we talked, I think last time, maybe not, about Fency, which is our big nutrition conference of the year. I'll slice my finger open. I will try not to. Um, this last piece is proving to be difficult. Here we go. Um, yeah, we went to Boston. We went to Boston. Networked with a lot of other nutritionists, or oh, dietitians, and I'm, professionals. I'm leaving you again for a second. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'll be back. Keep talking about Fency and how fun it is. Keep talking about Fency. Um, and so we went to Boston, which I haven't been to Boston in a very, very, very long time, so that was a lot of fun. Networked with people, bounced ideas off of them, went to a lot of seminars so that we can stay up to date on all of the most recent nutrition information because, you know, we do consider ourselves the nutrition professionals. And we're the ones that you want to come and see if you have any questions about food. So we always like to stay on top of things. Okay, I'm back again. You're back again. Yep. Food safety. Okay. So this is done. I'm going to take this out. So many veggies. And I like to keep my veggies a little bit crisper. Al dente. Al dente because it's a, a nice mix up from the pasta and the pork texture. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm just going to dump the rest of this out. Okay. Here we go. So now... Thing. Once your pasta is cooked, I feel like that's the longest part of this whole process. Mm -hmm. That's the great thing about stir fries is they're so fast. So fast. So I'm going to just throw a little bit more oil in here. If you're doing rice, you can just use those 90 second in the microwave mm -hmm. packs of rice and save that time too. You absolutely can. All right, so I am putting that in. You hear the sizzle. Let that go. So that's up and keep your heat up. These veggies smell good. Your sprinkles look, or some of rolls look very good. Thank you. And it looks very pretty with all the different colors inside. Oh, very fun. Very, very fun. Okay. Oh, my carrots are poking out. Breaking out. <laughs> Break to free from the cell. Diet prison. <laughs> carrots are breaking out of the diet prison. They're breaking out of the diet prison. They're joining the cleanse. Okay, that's going. So how can you participate in the cleanse? So we have a blog coming up at beginning of December, December 1, look out for it on social media, with links for the cleanse, our just recent, our most recent newsletter that came out just a couple weeks, so last week, something like mm -hmm. that, has a link to sign up for the cleanse. And really, you should just join it because we have prizes. I mean, you should join there are more reasons. I mean, there are, <laughs> but if you want, like, a really good reason, well, the really good reason is to help, you know, your life and get your cleanse in, mm -hmm. and we're going to help you 
make it simple again and regroup after the hectic holiday time. And feel better. And feel better. But we also have prizes. Well, we also have prizes. We also have prizes. I'm just saying, it's a great reason to join. It is. And we are giving away a lot of food prizes, things that we have tried, mm -hmm. we have tasted, and we, like. we think they taste good. Mm -hmm. Because we don't want you to be eating cardboard tasting bars that you think are good for you, but they taste like crap. Yeah, they don't so. taste very good. So we, again, did the work. We found which ones we like. We found which ones we stand behind. So we're going to be giving out a lot of snack packs and prizes and all that kind of fun stuff. So I'm still going with my fork. I think I went out of avocado. I'm going to run out of avocado. It looks so good. I'm excited to try them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll see if you get a stir. So, Caitlin, what's your favorite vegetable? Have we talked about this? Okay, I'm going to tell you a funny story. Okay, I'm ready. So, between undergrad and grad school, I worked at Whole Foods for a little while. Really? I didn't know that. I did. Yet. I was a cashier. And at Whole Foods, when you work there, you wear like an apron, and they always give you little buttons to put on your apron. Mm -hmm. and they're like fun, whatever. One of them is your name tag. So we, the girls were going around giving out the name, the new buttons, and it said, my favorite vegetable is blank, and they okay. wrote in what your favorite vegetable mm -hmm. was. Now, I don't like being put on the spot, <laughs> so I was like, cucumber. Cucumber, <laughs> okay. Which is actually technically a fruit, but true. I said cucumber, so they wrote it down, they gave me the button, and I cannot tell you how many people thought my name was cucumber. I thought it was my name tag, so people call me Cucumber. <laughs> oh, it's not my, my name. Goodness. But well, so okay, so that's not actually my favorite vegetable. Well, what is your favorite vegetable? I don't, I don't have favorites. <laughs> I don't. I love all of them except Brussels sprouts. Except Brussels sprouts, yeah, I don't like Brussels sprouts either. Well, okay, so I get this question a lot. So cucumber is a fruit. So is it because it has seeds that it's a fruit? Is that what's the differentiation? I think that's it. Technically, cucumbers, avocado, and tomatoes are all, all fruit. Does that mean peppers are fruit, too? I don't know. I think that that's answers, your question, yes. but I don't know. I know, you don't like to be put on the spot. Look at what I'm doing. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think... That's what I said. I'll do some research and get back to you. <laughs> so, a lot of our favorite veggies are technically fruits. I think they also they grow on trees or vines just and stuff. stuff up now. No, I'm not making stuff up. I'm pretty sure that's right. I'm pretty sure that's correct. All the vegetables grow underground. I think. Yeah. All vegetables grow underground. No, that can't be right. No, but fruits grow on vines and bushes. That I do know for a fact. That's why peppers and berries and well berries duh. peppers and avocados and tomatoes so nice and peppers are a fruit yeah too? because they have seeds <laughs> we're gonna find out and get back to you it's the truth <laughs> it's the truth we'll have our r d department get it get on it <laughs> all right that's me <laughs> game is our r d department a fruit is a seed bearing structure seed bearing seed structure. structure yeah interesting so i was right I don't think you're right with the, the all vegetables grow underground. Though. Okay, probably not right, is it? So it's botanically eggplant, bell peppers, and tomatoes. Eggplant, bell peppers, and tomatoes. Wow. See, we're learning new things too. It's learning something new. Yeah, they have seeds. Squash don't grow underground. Is a squash a fruit? <laughs> That's a seed bearing thing. That's true. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I do like squash. Zucchini's my favorite vegetable. Is it? Yeah. I wasn't even gonna. <laughs> I know what you didn't even ask me. I'm over here asking you. <laughs> Caitlin doesn't care, it's fine. You do. I'm just giving you a hard time. Alright, I'm still chugging away. Stir frying my beef, or my pork, sorry, not beef. I have a lot of pork in here, so it's taking a little bit longer than, than usual. I'm excited to try your summer rolls when you finish rolling. I think my, my uh, peanut sauce maybe will help. You want me to mix it up? Let me mix it. I need a little more oil. Yeah, a little bit of vinegar. I like doing things that, I don't know, are very repetitive and like crafting. I like making sushi. Mm -hmm. The little bamboo board and like you put everything on there. Roll it up. I do too. It's fun. I think it's why I like cake decorating. Mm. And decorating cupcakes because it's very repetitive. All right. Let's see how this is looking. 
do, 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 do. I'm gonna season this now, up. Let's How do you know when pork is done? How do you know? Well, if you have a big pork roast, you want to test it with a meat thermometer. Essential piece of kitchen equipment, buy a meat thermometer. Buy it. Buy it. They're not Use expensive. <laughs> you can get one for not a lot of money. Get it. So the best way to prevent overcooking your meat, number one, and undercooking your meat so that you're not mm. getting newborn illnesses. Um, so what temperature did you say? It is 155, I believe, for pork. I think it's... Is it? Yep. It's 155. I'm almost out of I think it's 145. Oh, 145. Okay. It used to be a lot higher. <laughs> it did trichinosis. It used to be higher. Trichinosis, trichinosis was a real concern. All right. But this is why I have Caitlin. Because <laughs> she helps me make sure I'm not good for cooking my pork. <laughs> when things, when pork is cut up like this, you know, it's kind of hard to check the temperature of it. So you wait until all the pink is gone and you can kind of feel out the meat and feel when it's very different and don't be afraid to play with your food I know I think that's another thing that people get what do you mean by that like touch it like feel it <laughs> you know feel the difference between a raw chicken breast and a well wash your hands and then feel the cooked chicken breast <laughs> but there's some like fun like have you ever had passion fruit before no yeah that's a fun fruit to try which is actually a fruit because it's seafaring or like papaya I don't like papaya but that one's kind of cool it has the like little black seed things. It should be more adventurous in my fruit. It should be too. Well now it's apple season and what I love about this area is that there are so many different apples. I went apple picking. You did go apple I picking. I did. It was a lot of fun. You go and I had no idea what to expect mm -hmm. but they give you this giant pole with a big old basket and claw on it so then you like cook it and pull it and it falls into the basket. Mm. <laughs> I brought home 30 pounds of apples. So what did you do with 30 pounds of apples? Some of them did not get eaten, <laughs> but <laughs> we were a little overzealous. But I made apple pies, apple bread, apple butter, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so if you go apple picking, the blog that's coming out on Thanksgiving treats coming out in a few weeks has these awesome mini upside down apple cakes that I made. Which happen to be in our refrigerator right now. Right now. That so I will be trying. That'll be our fun food later. Um, they were really good. And you make caramel to put in the bottom. You, I make them in like the muffin tins, like the ones that come in like the six mm -hmm. little wells. Put a little bit of caramel, a slice of apple, pour the batter in. It's the easiest dessert you've ever made. Mm. I like to bake, if you guys haven't noticed. so. So one of our listeners, Meg, wants to know if corn is a vegetable. Meg, okay, oh. hey Meg. Um, corn is what we consider a starchy vegetable. It is. So it is a vegetable, but we count it in the starch category. So when you're building your plate, you want to make half of your, oh, here we go. Let me use a real plate. You want to make half of your plate vegetables, a quarter of it starch and a quarter of it protein. So corn would fit in the starch category. Anything to add, Potatoes would kind of be in that Potatoes. category. Potatoes. Um, peas. The peas? Peas? I don't think peas are starchy. <laughs> I, they are. They are starchy. Okay. <laughs> I feel like they are. I don't eat peas, so that's why. <laughs> I don't. I don't eat peas. That's funny. Um, but most I'm other things person. are considered your non starchies So your bell peppers, your cucumbers, your cabbage, your green beans. Basically everything here. Everything here. But that's a great question. That is a great question. Thank you, Meg. <laughs> Clara learned something to say. <laughs> I don't eat peas. So that's part of being in private practice and part of cooking is learning new foods. And that's why it's great that we have each other because we all eat different kinds of foods. Definitely. Someone who doesn't eat Definitely. peas. Now just know. saying. Now, now I know. know. We also learned what that a bell pepper was a fruit today. So. Oh. everything all together I now. am. I'm going to mix in my veggies and add the veggies and we're going to add pasta. So what I'm going to do, actually I'm not going to make this in our office, I'm going to add it over here. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Lots of pasta. Is the sauce going yet? Too? It does. We're going to add it right now. Mix this all up. And then add this in. And get that heated up. here. Run out of few ingredients, but keep going. All right. So Kayla, why yes. did you become a registered dietitian? That is a good question. <laughs> so uh, the question is, why did I become a registered dietitian? And I feel like most people who get into the nutrition world have had something that happened to them or something that they went through to kind of create that desire to help others. So for me, it was, um, I reached my own like weight management goals and really kind of changed my lifestyle for the better. And it just kind of created the sense in me that I wanted to help other people and really teach them how to eat better and live a healthier lifestyle. So that's kind of um, pushed me into the nutrition world. You know, we talked about why we went, came into nutrition. Well, for, for me, I grew up in a family and in a culture. My family was, I was born in Croatia, moved here when I was really young and um, food is a huge part of our culture. It's like, you know, every day cooking, I grew up in a family where I was in the kitchen constantly um, doing a lot of cooking and I, um, when I started, you know, got to high school, middle school, I saw that, you know, there was a lot of that conversation about that's not healthy, that's not healthy. And for me, that confused me a lot because I was like, well, what's not healthy about it? So that kind of really like seeing some friends struggle with some personal things when I was younger um, kind of pushed me and that's you know why I love helping people with eating disorders. It's I have a double degree in psychology and dietetics, so that's kind of where my journey has been fueled from. I think so. Done. Just about. Perfect. So, I'm going to plate this up. Add a little bit. You can also cook so it. yummy. A little bit more. We have a nice little sauce going on in here. Lots of veggies. It's ready for one of your rolls. All right, let me pick a pretty one. Pick a pretty one. And we're gonna try this. Do you wanna put some sauce on it? Yeah, I'm gonna put this one. Oh, we're just gonna put, put it on right on there. <laughs> Not messing around. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Should we make two so we can both try it? Yeah, I guess. I got it. You got it? You're gonna I'll have make my own. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready for this. All right. Ooh, cheers. Cheers. I'm very impressed. These are very good. Thank you. I'm very good. Nice and crunchy. I mean, you can't go wrong with vegetables. Mm -mm. And the avocado is nice sauce. in there. And the peanut sauce is good. It's like salty, but it adds a nice flavor to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. They're not very cute to eat, but they do the job. Mm -hmm. All right, there you go. Thank you. Okay. I'm gonna sprinkle a little green onion on this too. And then Dana's gonna join us. She's Dana's another one joining of our us. <laughs> Hi Dana. Hello. Oh, oh, that smells us. good. We're eating in here. Oh. Try it? No, I haven't tried it yet. Alright. I'm just trying to close down. That's very <laughs> good. Well, let's keep cooking. Mm. That's a winner. That is a winner. Oh, yeah, that so here we have it. Yeah. A yummy home cooked pork lo mein. Yeah. Lots of veggies. And these pretty spring rolls. Summer, summer rolls. rolls. Yeah. Lots of crunchy vegetables. Current season. With a peanut sauce. All right. So stay tuned for our next food demonstration. And if you guys have any recommendations or things you'd like to see, let us know. Bye. Have a good weekend. <laughs>